when paleontologist Peter Dotson published The Horned Dinosaurs in 1996. Experts recognized around 23 different horned dinosaurs. Now the count has more than tripled, ranging from lanky little creatures known only from bits of jaw like gyrophot let me try that again, dryphoceratops, to hulking spiky herbivores such as cosmoceratops, hailed as the horniest dinosaur ever when discovered. Good title. The rate of discovery is increasing, and in 2016, two very strange looking horned dinosaurs were discovered. But today's exotic dinosaur is Machariosaratops cronusi. God damn it, who makes these names up? You're a sick bastard. He's got some cool looking antlers, kind of look like antenna from an ant, but definitely intimidating. It was discovered in the 77 million year old rock of southern Utah and is a variation of something already familiar. Named by Ohio University paleontologist Eric Lund and colleagues, Machariosaratops cronusi, meaning bent sword face, looks like a close cousin of the sinister looking Diabloceratops. Very cool name, Diabloceratops, found in the older strata of the same region. About 4 million years separate the two, and Machairoceratops can immediately be told apart by two forward pointing spikes jutting from the back of its frill. The other new ceratopsid on the block is Spicklepius Shipperum. Now this guy's a real asshole. Say that three times fast. This dino lived around 76 million years ago in what is now northern Montana. It has horns jutting out the side and an unusual arrangement of frill spikes, with some pointing outward and others folded down. Sounds like a shit show of random spikes. This arrangement gave the dinosaur its genus name, meaning spiked shield. This curious combination of ornament styles might explain how some of the other dinosaurs got their distinctive headgear. Spicklepius was a close relative of Cosmoceratops from Utah and Vagaceratops. <coughs> Sorry. Did you just say Vaginceratops? Vaginceratops from Alberta, both of which had frill spikes that jutted downwards instead of out. Jordan Mallon, a paleontologist, stated, I suspect what we're seeing is an interesting transitional morphology in Spicklepius between the more primitive forms, where the spikes all radiate outward, and the more advanced forms, like Cosmoceratops and va <coughs> sorry, Vagaceratops, where they curl forward. Remain professional viral killer. This is serious. Scientific research. Together, Machariosaratops and Spicklepius, sorry, these names are too ridiculous, give a big boost to the count of known horned dinosaurs. Horned, not horny. You sick bastards. We now have so many of these pointy plant eaters, Malin says, that it's getting hard to keep up. But given these dinosaurs have been waiting in the ground for over 66 million years, why are we experiencing such a great dinosaur rush now? There are two possible reasons. Raymond M. Alf Museum paleontologist Andrew Fark reckons that now we simply have more people and more museums searching for dinosaurs than ever before. Yeah, makes sense. Whenever you have more people out on the grounds looking, you're gonna find more stuff, Fark says. It's uh, pretty logical. That goes for museum collections too. In 2011, Fark and colleagues announced that they had found a previously unknown horned dinosaur tucked away in the collections of London's Natural History Museum. So let me get this straight. You found a newly discovered species in the basement. Okay. Incompetent much. They named this long-lost dinosaur Spinops sternbergerum. My god, you guys are sick. But it's not just a numbers game. There are still great patches of Western North America that have been little explored. The rocks that Machariosaratops was found in are a good example, Fark says, as the deserts of southern Utah were thought to be either too remote or lacking in fossils until recently. With persistence, these isolated places are yielding unexpected dinosaurs. Now crews are taking another look at spots that have been previously overlooked. Fark says paleontologists don't yet know what was going on in North America's ceratopsids between 90 to 80 million years ago, the time period when these dinosaurs started to get big and evolve into spiky mutations. Why would they start mutating? Carl Ripley. 
The fossils are probably out there, Fark says, waiting to be found. And Malin says, there's much to be learned from what experts have already collected. There's probably some interesting variation in already collected fossils that people just haven't been looking for, Malin says. And these clues can help paleontologists get a better idea of how these magnificent animals evolved. Sorry, um, am I doing it a little too American today? The discovery of a new dinosaur or two isn't just another addition to the ever-growing list of dinosaur names. The point is, when you have a large number of specimens and a large number of species, you can start asking and answering big picture evolutionary questions, Fark says. Horned dinosaurs were around for a hundred million years, and horny ones half a billion. <laughs> I'm sorry. And so Fark says, filling gaps in time and space with new species can allow paleontologists to look into whether these dinosaurs co-evolved with flowering plants, competed with other herbivores of their time, and how they might have been affected by shifting climates. Macharioceratops, Spicklepius, and all the rest are undoubtedly awesome, but the story ain't finished. I hope you enjoyed this exotic dinosaur. Join me in the next episode of Exotic Dinosaurs 2. And yes, I have some versus battles coming up. Stay tuned. Thanks for watching. Subscribe, like. Actually, do you know what? I ain't gonna do that generic ending. I'm gonna leave a mystery. 27915. What is the next number in that sequence? Bye. I just made it up, by the way. So if you find one, it's completely random.